In this video, our topic is long division of polynomials. Our first step with the long division process is to write the dividend in descending order. So that means start with your highest power term and work your way down to the constant term. Then we need to multiply the divisor by a factor to match the first term in the quotient. Next, we'll subtract. When you are subtracting, you have to make sure to distribute the negative to all of the terms in the quantity, and then we'll end up combining like terms. With this process, you should be able to eliminate the first term each time with your subtraction, and we'll show you how that works in our first example. So we just keep repeating this process until we end up with the remainder, or sometimes we'll have zero for the remainder. So here's our first example, x squared plus 5x minus 6. The divisor is x plus 6. So we are going to end up subtracting something from x squared plus 5x minus 6. In order to figure out what is getting subtracted, our goal is to try to eliminate x squared. But we're starting with x. So over here to the side, I'm starting with x and I need to somehow match x squared so that when I subtract it, it goes away. So x times something makes x squared. That would be x. So x is going to be written right up here. Now I'm going to multiply x times each term in the divisor. So x will be multiplied by x and then by 6. X times x is x squared. x times 6 is positive 6x. Notice how x squared and x squared are exactly the same. So when I distribute this negative, it actually changes the sign of every term in the quantity. And now you can see how x squared minus 6x are eliminated. And that was the whole goal. So 5 minus 6 would make negative x. Bring down your last term and start the process all over again. So I want to make sure I have this subtraction set up and ready to go. That way, these parentheses remind me to distribute the negative. So again, I'm starting with x. I'll be multiplying it by something to make this first term eliminate. So if I'm trying to match negative x, I can see that multiplication of negative 1 is needed. So that negative 1 gets written up here. I distribute now using the negative 1. So negative 1 times x is negative x. See how those matched exactly? And finally, minus 1 times 6 is negative 6. Our next step is to distribute the negative, so that changes the sign of everything that comes after. Negative x plus x, that is eliminated. Negative 6 plus 6, well, that's a bonus. That also eliminated. So this simply means we have 0 remainder. Our answer is x minus 1. In order to check the answer, did you even think it was possible? We're going to take x minus 1 and multiply it by our divisor x plus 6. So when I distribute x, I end up with x squared plus 6x, and then I'll distribute the negative 1, and I end up with minus x minus 6. In the middle, I have like terms. So x squared plus 5x minus 6. Does this match? And it does. So that's how you can check your answer. Are you ready to try another one? Here we go. x plus 7 is the divisor. So we're trying to take x squared plus 10x plus 21 and divide it by x plus 7. So I'll automatically get these parentheses set up for the subtraction. I'm starting with x, multiplying it by something so that we can eliminate this first term, x squared. x times 
x would make x squared. So this amount that I'm writing in the parentheses is going to be written somewhere up above. So if it's first degree, it's written above the other first degree term. Multiply with x. So x times x would be x squared. x times 7 is positive 7x. Distributing the negative changes the sign of all of the terms. x squared is eliminated. 10 minus 7 is 3x. Bring down your last term. Set up your subtraction with the parentheses and start the process all over. Starting with x, this time our first term is 3x, so we want to multiply x by something to match exactly with 3x. So x times 3 will do that. 3 is a constant term, so positive 3 will line up with the other constant term. Distribute 3 times x, that's 3x. 3 times 7 is positive 21. Make sure you distribute the negative so that will change the sign for all of our terms. 3x is eliminated. Positive 21 minus 21. Well, that happens to be 0 also. So our final answer is x plus 3. In example 3, we have 2x squared minus x minus 10 is divided by x plus 2. So I'll set up the parentheses for subtraction. Starting again with x, we're trying to match 2x squared. So x times 2x would match 2x squared. So 2x, I'm looking for the other first degree term. There it is, so that lines up. Distribute 2x times each of these terms, and I'll have 2x squared plus 4x. When I distribute the negative, it changed the sign of all of our terms. 2x squared minus 2x squared, eliminate. Minus 1 minus 2. 4. That's minus 5x. Bring down the 10, and it's a minus 10. Set up the parentheses for your next subtraction. Again, we're starting with x. This time we need to match a negative 5x. So x times minus 5 will match negative 5x. So if you were wondering, would we ever have subtraction up here? We will. Distribute negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. We're ready to distribute our negative, so it changes the sign of all of the terms. Negative 5x, positive 5x, eliminated. Negative 10, positive 10, eliminated. We have 0 remainder. Our answer is 2x minus 5. Now we do have something a little bit different in example 4. 4x squared minus 9. Do you notice that there's no first degree term here? So what we need to do if you are missing a term is you will need to rewrite this. So I'll put x minus 2. We keep 4x squared but since there's no first degree, I need a placeholder. Do you agree that adding 0x doesn't change the value at all? Because 0 times x would be 0. And I'll keep the minus 9 at the end. So I have all my degrees accounted for. Second degree, first degree, constant term. So now it's going to be just like the previous examples. I'm starting with x, multiplying by something, to match positive 4x squared. So let's get the subtraction set up and ready. It looks like we just need 4x. So another reason for using the placeholder is we needed a column for the first degree x, and now we have it. 
distributing 4x times each of these terms results in 4x squared minus 8x. Again, we needed a place to write the minus 8x, so all of those first degree terms are lined up. We're ready to distribute, so that changes the sign of all the terms that come after it. 4x squared minus 4x squared eliminates. 0 added to 8 makes 8x. Bring down your last term of minus 9 and start the process over. So we're starting with x and we need to match positive 8x. So it looks like x times 8 would do that. Positive 8 means we're adding 8. So distribute 8 times x to get 8x. 8 times the negative 2 is minus 16. Once we distribute this negative and change the sign of all of our terms, we can see that 8x and negative 8x are eliminated. Negative 9 and positive 16 are going to make positive 7. Well, we don't have any more terms to bring down, and we didn't end up with 0 this time. So 7 is the remainder. But we don't write R7 like back in grade school. Since it's a positive 7, we will add the remainder. 7 becomes the numerator of the remainder, and our divisor, x minus 2, is the denominator of the remainder. So that looks kind of complicated, but this is our solution right here. In our last example, we have 6x squared minus 19x plus 12, so it looks like every degree is accounted for. We don't need any placeholders this time. But we're not starting with x. This one starts with 3x. So starting with 3x, we're trying to make a match for positive 6x squared. So let's set up the subtraction to get it ready. So 3 times 2 would make 6, and x times x would make x squared. 2x will be written above in the first degree column. Multiplying 2x times each of these terms gives us 6x squared minus 10x. Don't forget to distribute that negative. It changes the sign of the terms in the quantity. So 6x squared minus 6x squared is eliminated. Negative 19 and positive 10 would give us minus 9x. And finally, bring down the positive 12. Set up the parentheses for subtraction. So when I begin with 3x, I want to match negative 9x. So that looks like negative 3 is missing. So I will have subtraction of 3 written above. When I multiply through with negative 3, I match negative 9x. And negative 3 times negative 5 would be positive 15. It's time to distribute the negative, which changes the sign. Negative 9x and positive 9x are eliminated, but 12 and minus 15 don't eliminate. I will have negative 3 remaining. So we have a remainder that happens to be a negative number. So that tells us we will be subtracting a fraction. 3 goes in the numerator, and our divisor of 3x minus 5 is our denominator. Don't use the negative again. I've already included the negative with this subtraction symbol. So if your remainder is a negative number, you subtract the remainder. If the remainder is a positive number, you would add the remainder.